Hey guys and welcome back to another video here at Mega Jordanary. So today's case is very close to home for us. It's a case that occurred in 2019 and yeah it's still unsolved to this day. So before we begin I want to give our usual disclaimer that all the information that we will be discussing in this video we have obtained from multiple news sources on the internet and media outlets. We do not mean any harm or to cause any offence to any of the people that we are discussing in this video or their families. We are simply just accumulating all the information that we've obtained, putting it into our own words for this video for educational purposes. So today is the case of missing Icelandic man John Johnson, who went missing from Dublin in February 2019. John and his fiancée Jana had decided that they were going to take a trip to Ireland for 10 days and three out of those 10 days they were going to spend at a poker tournament because in Iceland it's actually illegal to gamble so that's part of the reason why they came to Ireland. So when they arrived at Dublin airport there was a little bit of a mix up. There was an issue with Jana's passport so she had to be detained for the night. But because of this unforeseen event John decided that he would just go to the hotel, check in and kind of relax and wait for Yana the following day. So the hotel that they were staying at was the Bonnington Hotel, which is literally so close to us, isn't it? Very close. Like very, very close. And the Bonnington Hotel actually just recently in the last couple of years went through a rebrand. It was actually called the Regency Hotel prior to this, so. So when John checked in to the hotel that night in order to pass some time, while he waited for Yana to come the next day. John decided to attend an unregistered poker tournament downstairs in the Bonington Hotel. And at this poker tournament, John actually lost 4,000 euro in a game. And because he was an avid gambler, and him and Yana knew what they were coming over for, they had a lot of money saved, so it wasn't a big issue for the couple that he lost four grand. Well, this is what Yana says anyway. And the next morning, Yana got the all clear, so she got out of passport control and everything, and she made her way to the Bonington Hotel. And when she got there, she said that John was actually asleep in the room, and apparently they had a very heated discussion. And Yana decided that she was gonna just get some space, and she was gonna go downstairs and get a coffee and some breakfast. But when Yana returned to their hotel room, John wasn't there. Now CCTV footage outside the Bonington Hotel actually recorded John leaving at about 3 minutes past 11 on the 9th of February. It seemed that he had gone outside to have a cigarette. And the CCTV footage which we're going to insert now shows him walking up the road. And then another CCTV camera of a nursing home nearby shows John looking in the window. And that is the last ever recording of John. So Yana had waited in their hotel room for quite some hours and when John didn't return, Yana then went downstairs and alerted the hotel security. And this is when the Gardaí, the Irish police force, became involved. So the last official sighting of John was on Swords Road heading towards Collins Avenue. So a couple of days after John's disappearance, his family members from Iceland flew over to Ireland in order to get involved with the search and help look for John. The Gardaí had already searched surrounding areas and greenery in this area. And I actually remember at the time seeing, you know, missing persons flyers all around Dublin, all around the area, and there was actually a huge, huge banner of John with all his details, you know, his height, what he was last wearing, etc, etc on the Whitehall Road. It's like a big junction and it was just sprawled across the junction. So, you know, everybody in Dublin was well aware to keep a lookout for John. 
So on one of these searches, John's brother actually found a cigarette book and a packet of cigarettes that were from Iceland that John always smoked. John's brother found these on Grace Park Road and this is quite nearby where John would have been last seen. Very good. But the cigarette lead, nothing ever came of that. Like the police didn't really look into it or anything. Well, not that, not that they've ever said to the public. Now, a lot of people were speculating that maybe John had trigger warning went off and ended his own life. But John's family and his fiance always say that John had just renewed his taxi license back in Iceland and he had four children. He was due to be married. There was nothing really that they knew going wrong in John's life that would lead him to do this, especially in a country that he had never been in before. He would have had no way to know how to navigate Dublin or anything like that. Yes, on that road, there are a lot of buses. It's a very, very busy road. There's taxis and stuff. He may have hopped into a taxi, but how come the cigarettes were found in Drumcondra in Grace Park? You know, so that theory's kind of out the window unless he got a taxi at a different point. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Yeah. And another thing to note, John had his wallet and his cigarette on him at the time, but left all his other personal belongings in the hotel room. None of John's bank accounts were accessed after John disappeared. He didn't have his phone on him. He left his phone in the hotel room, but Yana said that he kind of wasn't big into his phone. Like it kind of was a bit like old. It wasn't working too well. He just wasn't really interested in it. So that wasn't his top priority. So that's probably why his phone was left in the room. Another major thing that would lead you to believe that John had every intention of returning to the hotel was that he took his room key card with him. So he was planning on returning at some point that day. Now there was an article published by the Irish Independent in 2020 that John's family are taking legal action against the journalist and the newspaper because it had said that the 4,000 euro that John lost belonged to an Icelandic criminal and that the 4,000 euro was actually meant to be used to register a number of poker players and the article kind of said that when John realised he was losing these winnings that he tried to make a quick exit but he got into an altercation with some of the players there that were also from a different country that had come in to play poker and they got into a physical altercation but there's no proof of this and the newspaper also said that the person or source that told them all this information also told them that John was supposed to meet with the criminal that lent him this money on the Saturday in Dublin somewhere. Who knows? We don't know why the newspaper ran with this, but yeah. So they kind of were trying to piece together this picture that John's family really are not happy about and they are going to be dealing with that. The newspaper then alluded to the fact that John was killed by this criminal in temper and the rest is a mystery. Now, as we said, John's family have vehemently denied this and they said this source was just made up by the journalist just for a story to run with. John's family released a statement on the matter. And yeah, th that's it. It's really, you know, really an unsolved mystery. There is no new lead. Nobody has any idea what has happened to John Johnson or his whereabouts. But I think it's definitely one of Ireland's and Iceland's most biggest unsolved mystery to date. So if you are in Ireland and you have any information, please contact the Gardaí. So we are going to link the official website for John Johnson down below in the description. Let us know some of your thoughts and theories on the case down below. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit that little bell notification to be notified for every video going forward, and give this video a thumbs up and let us know what you think down below in the comments. Yeah. And as always, we are extending our condolences to John's friends and family. And we just pray that one day John is found safe and well. Until next time, Peace. bye.